All right, good evening, everybody. So tonight, I want to find out, will the EG4 6500s run my three and a half ton air conditioner that does not have a soft start? I don't know. It's getting way too hot outside, so I really want to find out. So let's get started. So it seems like summer has kind of hit with a vengeance right now. It's, it's supposed to be upper 80s, near 90s uh, all week. And for me, that's way too hot. <laughs> I, I do not, I would prefer a good, you know, 65 because that's good working weather. You can work outside, you can get stuff done, and you're not going to overheat and sweat to death. But this 90 degree stuff, yeah, way too hot. So right now I don't have things wired up the way that I really would need to in order to test the air conditioner, test the dryer, the oven, that kind of stuff, because they're all running on my grid only panel. But then I was watching Average Joe's channel, but he made the comment about back feeding from his critical loads panel into his main panel once he flips that main breaker off. And I thought, that's a great idea because I was thinking that I'm gonna have to run wires all throughout the utility room and just kind of suspend them in the air just just to run the test because I want to see if it's gonna work and then I saw his video and his comment on removing the interlock kit and back feeding that panel I'm like yes that's what I'm gonna do so the past few days I've been having an overabundance of power to where by one o'clock I'm, I'm at hundred percent so I need some more loads so I thought well I might as well try this this back feeding but what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to turn off my AC in on my inverters because that's I will not have AC in during this test I will have to remove the interlock kit for my critical loads panel and then I will have to go out and turn off the main breaker on my main panel. So let's start flipping off what we need to and getting ready to go. And then Ian's going to help out uh, running this test to see, is it actually going to run the three and a half ton air conditioner? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm kind of excited to see. So let's start flipping breakers and getting ready to go. All right, just to give you a small idea of the draw when this starts up, this meter cannot do inrush, but I set it to max, and it's on one leg of my AC breaker. So let me turn on the AC, and we'll see what at least the max is on startup for that uh, AC 3.5 ton. So, again, this is not inrush. Uh, this cannot detect inrush, but we had a max draw of 83 amps. So if this got 83 amps, I can only imagine what the actual inrush would be. Uh, and that's just on one leg. All right, I removed the interlock kit. This is my solar feed. My mains are still off because there's still power coming down to these see on the inverter I have turned off my AC input and that was done by turning this breaker off here. So here's our three and a half ton AC unit. No soft start on it. It's got some power company monitor thingy on it. So I've got the necessary breakers turned off. That's kind of why it's dark in here because the panel that controls the lights in this room is typically on the grid mains. And I went outside and I flipped the main breaker off in that main panel. I tested the lines coming into my critical loads panel. 
they have no lo they no longer have power coming in from the grid so effectively everything is dead so when I turn this on before I turn the air conditioning on uh, assuming the back feeding works properly these lights should come on and these inverters don't go poof <sighs> cross your fingers and hope <laughs> because I really don't want to have to deal with that that loss of, of uh, that big of an accident. But from everything that I've looked at, I've tested, I've probed, there's, there's no power coming back into these inverters. The grid line to these inverters has been disconnected, so it should just back feed through the critical loads to my main panel and then feed back to the panel behind the camera, which is my typical inside main grid panel. And then I've got Ian upstairs, he's by the thermostat. Once everything comes back on, I'm gonna have him go through and switch the thermostat to air conditioner and turn it down to 72 degrees. And we'll see what happens. Uh, Lord help me not to screw this one up. <laughs> well, nothing went pop. Got 240 going back out. And we've got lights in the utility room. All right, so if the lights go out, then the inverter tripped because of the surge. Looking at the system, we got 600 watt load right now. We've got 1,000 watts coming in for PV. All right, Ian, go ahead and switch the thermostat to air conditioner. Okay. You said turn it down to 72. And we fault it out. <laughs> well, I guess that's our test. We tried. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to look at Solar Assistant to see what happened. I heard it tried, and I heard a noise behind me, and then the lights dimmed, and then everything went out. So, well, this just goes to show folks you need a soft start. I guess I'm gonna have to look at getting one of those at some point in time real soon if I wanna run the air conditioner off of solar. And for those of you wondering, so 2P1 is still working. 2P2 is showing uh, F06, which I'll have to look at what that error is here in a minute. So we will turn off PV. Wait for them to power off and make sure they come back on. So F06 is output voltage is too high. Interesting. All right, let's power them back on. Plug my solar assisted cable back in. So we've got our output voltage to 120 volts. We'll turn PV back on. And we're back to, well, almost back to working like we should. I gotta turn breakers back on, but we did not fry the inverters. Woohoo! <laughs> Seem very happy about that. And I guess. Oh, the well just kicked on. Well, we'll see if it works. Yep, they're working. Yay! Well, that was an interesting test, even though it failed. <laughs> so, I got everything turned back on. Everything's back to the, exactly the way that it should be. Uh, with the exception that my air conditioning's not running on my solar. So, uh, if any of you guys have recommendations for soft starts for a three and a half ton AC unit, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And I'm sure I'm going to have to work on getting one of those installed shortly so that I can utilize all this excess solar that I have during the summertime. So with that, I'm going to let you all go. Y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.